Uh, we are we recording now. Okay. All right. Well, Jai Baba, everyone. Um, tonight, as you know, our special guest is Farshid Namaranian. I hope I'm pronouncing that all right. Um, and I will begin by reading his bio. And then we will continue from there. So Farshid Namaranian was born in Yaz, Iran, in a family dedicated to Meher Baba. Many of his elder relatives and family members met Meher Baba going back to the mid-1920s. His two paternal uncles were in Baba's ashram. He grew up with several Prem Ashram boys who later returned to Iran to live their adult years. Farshid had the special honor to translate for these special souls who spent precious time with Baba as teenagers at Mirabad. He has written their life stories. He now lives in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and is the husband of Marjan, who is deeply devoted to Baba. And he is the father of two sons who have grown up coming frequently to the center and taking part in its many activities. We look forward to hearing his wonderful stories of time spent with all those fortunate souls from Iran who were students at Baba's Prem Ashram in the 1920s at Mehrabad, like Asfandir Vasali and his own relatives. So Farshid, welcome again. And <clears throat> we uh, look forward to hearing all your wonderful stories of life spent with these special souls that have been students with Bab and Baba's close company uh, in the Prem Ashram, which was such an important phase in this advent of his. Um, so please enlighten us with your wonderful stories and over to you. Hey Baba, thank you for inviting me. And uh, it's a blessing to talk about Baba, to talk about uh, the mayor and Premashram boys. Um, just give you a little bit of background on the, uh, you know, on my life. Um, I, I go back to the early 20s, uh, which, you know, I wasn't even born then, but uh, let's start the story from there. Uh, that was the time that uh, Baba instructed. Baidol, Baidol, who was in Yaz at the time uh, as a teacher, he was teaching the, some of the students in Yaz, where I was born also, and Baba's, Baba's father also was born uh, uh, in Yaz, Sheriyar. Um, so anyway, ba Baba instructs Baidol to, you know, to see if there are any people interested or the boys interested in going to a school that he was establishing on in Merabad and uh, it was called the uh, Mer Ashram in the beginning. And Baidul actually put 14 boys together and two of them were my lucky uh, uncles, my father's brothers, who were actually twins. One was Khodadad, uh, Khodadad was my father actually. Hodayar and Khosro, uh, they, uh, they were the two boys and then tw 12 other boys from different villages around the Yaz. And uh, that was in 1927 when Beidl took them to, uh, to India. Now, I'm going to stop there, come back to 1929, when Baba sent all the boys back home, and give you a little bit of introduction of uh, my grandfather. Um, my grandfather gave the boys, you know, to Baidur to take to India, but uh, he didn't know who Mayor Baba is. He loved Jesus, actually. He, although he was in a Zoroastrian family, uh, he, he, loved, he respected and loved Jesus uh, a lot. But what happened uh, when Baba comes in 1927 to Yaz, uh, because you know Baba came to Iran three times. Um, one was when in 1924, when before his silence, and then in 1927, and then uh, uh, 
no, nine, no, not 1927, 1929 and then uh, 1931 for the last time, which he, uh, he only went to Mashhad in 1931. But anyway, when he comes in 1929 to visit the boys in, 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 in Iran, which were mostly from the Yaz area, he goes to Yaz and he goes to Beidou's house and to <laughs> other boys' houses too. And the story is that my grandfather, uh, you know, sees Baba from a distance and he follows Baba from his village all the way to Jafarabad, where, where Baba was, you know, staying for a few days with Baidu. And uh, he, you know, he just saw something miraculous happen that he started believing who Mayor Baba really was. And the miraculous thing, which I read it uh, some other places too, was that uh, Baido's uh, wife, Sultun, uh, wanted uh, some food to be made for the Mandalis. So Sultun made only you know, uh, enough food for the few Mandalis who were with Baba. But when Baba goes there, there's a lot of people actually, you know, show up and they wanted to meet Baba. And then Baba just says to Sultan, you know, bring the food. Sultan is surprised. He says, Baba, you know, she says, Baba, I only have a pot of, you know, rice and a little dal that I made for you and the Mandalis. But Baba says, no, bring it, bring it, what you, what you have, bring it. But bring it and cover it with a sheet, you know, over it. So he, she brings it to Baba and Baba puts the tray down and starts serving and serving and serving. Serves all the people there and they all eat and they're all food. And Sol to, to, his, to her amazement is watching this and my grandfather is watching this. He says, what's going on here? A small pot is feeding the whole you know, community here. And he remembers of Jesus you know, doing the same thing. And uh, here... Baba tells Sultan to take the, you know, the pot back into the kitchen. And Sultan takes the pot back and looks into the pot and it looks like the, the food was never touched. I mean, not, not all the people ate it and they were filled and, you know, the, the food is still is in, in the pot. So anyway, that, that's how my grandfather met Mayor Baba and Later years, you know, the boys grew up. Khoda Ayar was in Meir Ashram. Khosro was in Prem Ashram. Esfandiyar Vesali, who also I grew up with, was with them. And then Shapur Merdadi, who was actually one of Baba's uh, second cousins from the other, yeah. from Sherya's brother, actually. The descendant of Sherya's brother. He was with them too. And, you know, some other boys. One from Majumer, uh, which is close to Jafar, about who uh, Svandir came from and Baidul came from. Um, a couple of them, a few of them from Khoramsha, which was actually uh, Baba's father's, uh, you know, home uh, village, you know, in the close to the city of Yaz. Two from Nostrat Abad, who were my uncles. So anyway, they all go, 14 of them. And... Uh, my grandmother later met Mayor Baba in 1965 when Baba was giving the uh, uh, Eastern Darshan. But my father went to see Baba in 1962. Um, and uh, in 62, he went with a couple of his brothers, uh, the, the two boys uh, from the ashram. And then in 63, Esfandir Vesali goes to see Baba. Uh, and that has a long story of its own, how he ended up to go in 63 and not 62. And then 65, also one of my aunts goes to see Baba. And one of my uncle and cousin goes to see Baba. Two of my cousins actually go in 65. One is Jangir Merabampur, you might... I've heard of him. He lives in Shiraz. He's still alive. He's like in his 90s. And uh, he's, you know, he's got a 
great love for Baba. Um, There's your mama. My mother actually wanted to go. And... Your mama. Hello? What is it? You can keep going. Somebody wasn't muted. Oh, okay. Uh, my mother wanted to go, but it never happened because, you know, we came from a poor family. My grandfather was a farmer with a couple of cows and some uh, pomegranate orchards that he would sell and, you know, make a living and grew his kids. And uh, my father later on was a cab driver uh, spreading Baba's message that day and wanted to go take my mother and some of us too, actually, I remember that, but never happened you know we didn't have enough money uh, he didn't have enough money to take us and he was going in 69 to see baba actually they were preparing to go because baba told them that i would give darshan again in 1969 and uh, the news came that baba uh, had dropped his body and I remember as Fandir at the time said, you know, now that Baba dropped his body, you don't have to go. The message is that you should find Baba in your heart and everyone should take a turn. And he had a picture of Baba in a secluded place up uh, on upper, upper, uh, upper, upper floor of his house. And uh, he had assigned everyone who wanted to go there and sit and, you know, repeat Baba's name and, and, um, basically meditate on Baba and I, I did that too and many of many of us did that but they didn't go because they didn't have enough money. They had made you know, even the passport and the picture and everything to do that but never happened. Uh, let me stop here uh, for a little bit and see if anybody wants to hear any of the stories that I kind of uh, refer to because there are a lot of stories and there are a lot of long stories too. So um, if anybody has any question, please bring it up. Uh, if not, I can continue um, with uh, some of the loving stories of the boys later years uh, when they grew up. Because, uh, you know, when they grew up, they stayed and, my uncles are stayed in Shiraz, so I would see them once in a while. They would come to Tehran. I remember a couple of times we went to Shiraz and visited them. But not a, not a whole lot of contact with my uncles, but mostly with Esfandiyar and Sheryar Merabampur also, who was not a Prem Ashram boy, but he was with Baba and uh, took, uh, took care of Prem Ashram boys for a while and ended up in Saudi Ashram later, and Baba sent him back home. Um, said, go go there, I am there with you, and spread my message of love uh, in Iran, and I'm there with you. So he, uh, Esfandiyar, my father, Shapur Merdadi, uh, they, uh, they kind of had a weekly meeting on Friday evenings and they would start sharp at four o'clock in the afternoon and finish at five. One, one hour meeting, um, starting with prayers, keeping silence for a little bit, and then reading Baba's words, you know, discourses and, uh, and messages. Um, talking, about messages. talking about messages, uh, um, in one of these meetings, I was, you know, a small boy sitting in a meeting, not knowing a whole lot. And there, there was uh, a message of Baba being read from, uh, uh, from Mayor Baba calling. And that message was, if you have the, the, the peace of a frozen lake, you will realize me. And uh, by uh, kind of, you know, hearing this message, and as a, as a you know, uh, small boy, I looked around the room to see who has this piece of a frozen lake. And my eyes fell on a Spandiyar, Vesali, 
who was the Ramachan boy. Um, and I saw him beaming, you know, like uh, so peaceful with his uh, eyes closed and just beaming. And I said, if he, if anyone has piece of a frozen lake, is this man, you know, as a boy. And I didn't know a whole lot about the Spaniard at the time. As I grew up, I realized that he was in the Pramashram, Bidmer, Baba. And he wouldn't talk uh, too much about himself. He would talk about, you know, Baba and have people read Baba's messages. And it happened so that I came to United States uh, for education and the war started in Iran. And my parents didn't want me to go back, so I had to keep going with my education. And I stayed here, and, you know, it, it's, it's your, I think it was 1989, yeah, late 89, beginning of 1990, that my sister, Gohar, called from Iran and said that, uh, you know, she and Esfandiar are going to... Uh, Marabad, and they want me to go if I can. And uh, I went. Um, I went, but I went with uh, with a lot of, you know, question in my mind. And the question was that I had read in uh, in Best of the Glow, uh, a little pamphlet, that Baba had said that Esfandiar Vesali was on the third plane of consciousness when he was in Premashram, and also I have read God Speaks, and in God Speaks, Baba says that any souls in higher planes of consciousness can bring other souls to their own level. And uh, with that in mind, you know, I went there and I had a great time with the Mandalis and also Sfandiar and visiting my sister and all that. But Sfandiar wanted to be in Dharamsala, you know, the, that place on Lower Merabad. Uh, he said that that was his school when he went to uh, Meher Ashram. And, you know, Kaykhosro Afsari or Rao uh, Saheb uh, was his teacher. And uh, he, he liked that place. That's why he chose to stay there. And he wanted me to stay with him. So it was only two of us in that Dharam Salah at that time. And our bed was face to face. So, you know, he, uh, his routine was, you know, after, um, you know, the daily activity, he would go retire in the room and sit in his bed uh, for quite a, quite a, quite a long time. And, and uh, think of Baba, you know, imaging Baba within himself, loving him. And he, he had taught me how to do that also, even in Iran, um, you know, in, in many, many uh, sessions that we had together with other kids. And sometimes we would go to the mountains in Iran and we would sit on, at the edge of cliff and he would tell us how Baba taught them to meditate on him or remember him and, you know, create that love that Baba talks about in, in the new book, uh, Creation and His Causes. Um, so he would, you know, tell us how to do it. And we, and we would, you know, start from there. Um, and then, anyway, going back to the... Uh, to the Dharam Salah, I'm sitting across him and we do, you know, a, a nice, good meditation together. Um, I mean, the meditation wasn't the meditation of the mind. It's the meditation of the heart. You open your heart to Baba's love and uh, try to picture him within yourself and love him to the extent possible. That's, that's the meditation of the heart. Uh, and through that, after his, it was done, I saw him in a very cheerful mode. And uh, here was my, my thing of, of him. I suddenly, you know, saw him in that cheerful mode. I said, I better ask him a question. So I told him, Amu, Amu means uncle. You know, I was always uh, 
referring to him or calling him out. I said, Amu, you know, I read uh, in a book that you were on the third plane of consciousness when you were in Permashram. And uh, I don't know what your, you know, what your status is right now, where you are. But also I read in God Speaks that, you know, any soul can bring other souls to their own level. So um, why don't you bring me to your own level? You know, that's the, <laughs> the stupid question that I asked him. And uh, actually he, he, you know, he kind of laughed a little bit and then he put his hand in his pocket. He, he, he would bring, when he would come from Iran, he would bring pistachios, uh, raisins, you know, kind of mixed nuts and, you know, things like that to, uh, to share, uh, not only with the Mandalay, sometimes he would give bags of those to the Mandalay. Also, he would share it with Muhammad the Mas. Uh, daily, sometimes he would go and sit with Muhammad the Mas because, because we were on, on Lower Merabad. MPC was not built yet. No, MPC was built. MPC was not built on my first trip, that was 79. So anyway, uh, yeah, he would sit with Muhammad and, you know, share those. Uh, he put his hand in his pocket and brought some of these out and said that it's not like this. I can, he said, I can help, but it's not like this that I can put this in your hand. This, basically, he said, it's not that easy. You know, I can't give it to you like that. And then he said, you have to work. And, you know, then I started questioning him, what do you mean by work? And he said, the work of love, you know. The, he said, the cloud of sanskaras are too thick in humanity because of all the journeys that had had in the past through, you know, all these um, creatures and animals and whatnot until it comes to human being, and it's still in human being, is full of garbage, basically, which is all the sun's colors. And until and unless these cloud of sun's colors are not, you know, are not thinner, thinned and gone away, the beam of light, the, the divinity of God cannot be realized and cannot be seen. Uh, so he said the work is to thin out this sanskara. And to the way to thin out is love. He said Baba brought this example. I mean, there are many methods, he said. Baba, you know, Baba said in, in his discourses, uh, many different ways of how to get rid of sanskaras. One is, you know, go into the mountain and abandon the world and all that. But Baba doesn't, doesn't suggest that. And then... The other one, which is the best and can help, would be love. You live in the world, but you are not of it, and you love as it should be loved. And as you love, the love is a detergent for the clean laundry. As you, uh, you know, create that love more and more within yourself, you are basically wiping out and cleaning up uh, all the all the dirt that has been accumulated for uh, ages and ages on, on human soul. And once the dirt is gone, the shine of uh, divinity will, uh, will come through. It's so natural. He says it's so natural that it's not uh, something out of the, uh, out of the, you know, out of, uh, um, it's, it's ordinary, it's, it's not, you know, it's natural, it's not something um, that is not, you know, impossible. But the work of love has to be done. And uh, then again, he started, you know, saying by um, doing good things, helping others, making others happy, um, loving others and also creating love for Baba, um, concentrating on, on him and, uh, you know, being an in, 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 
in an inner communion with the beloved as much as possible uh, throughout you know your life throughout the day throughout the night um, then eventually this cloud of sanskaras will vanish and the soul will realize the divinity of of, uh, of god so then the work started and and then he told me uh, something which was a surprise to me he said now that baba has revealed my identity through you because nobody knew what is you know what plane he is and all that until i read this and i went and disclosed it to him he said that now that baba has revealed your ident my identity through you maybe it's time for me to speak and that could help other souls too and then he started uh, talking about baba and his experiences in the premonition for the first time in on lower Merabad, uh, right around where Muhammad the Mast is sitting, was sitting actually most of the time. And uh, that was recorded, and then there was a movie made of it by Sufis, Sufi Baba lovers, um, called uh, the Mem Ashram Memories, yeah. Which I think is on YouTube, you can watch it, Ashram Memories. So, and then, you know, the story goes on, um, this way that, and I think, you know, when I go back, it's all Baba's plan. I, I didn't want to come to, to the West. I, want, I, I had a desire to go to India, actually. I applied for many schools in India to get accepted, but I didn't accept. Nobody accepted me to go there. Um, so what happened, uh, the revolution started in Iran, and and my, uh, um, you know, my, I, I, I wasn't a militant person. I didn't see that event within me to go to military. Um, so they told me, you know, you have, you have, if you, if you stay, you have to go to war. Otherwise, you have to go. So going out was difficult, but Baba made it so easy. And I think he, he, now that I look back, Baba made it all possible. There was tests of English as a foreign language. I had to take that to get a good grade on that to be able to get my visa you know, through American embassy, which wasn't closed yet. And it closed right after I got my visa. Uh, but anyway, that was canceled at the time. For some reason, I don't know why, they canceled it. So I didn't have to take that. Only what they wanted was an admission from a college, from a university in America. And my friend Farhad Shafa, who is a Sufi Baba lover, he sent me uh, an admission from JFK in California and for master's degree because I had a bachelor's degree in computer at the, sun, at the time. And I came, uh, stayed in Auckland for a while and moved to Seattle for a while and then Vancouver for a while. Anyway, moved around quite a bit. But, but wanted to say that Baba made this possible for me to get out of Iran, to come here and be, uh, be able to, you know, to do something when Asfandiyar comes. Um, because he came, he got a visa, he came here, he stayed here for, for quite actually quite a while. And he, I was traveling a lot of times with him to, um, to uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, Baba Center. And he did a lot of beautiful uh, um, talk of his experiences and all that in Myrtle Beach. And uh, uh, he was also a sponsor for me to get out of Iran because the American embassy at the time wanted some financial support to be to give us a visa, otherwise they wouldn't give us. And I didn't have any money. My father didn't have my, any money. And Esfandiar said, I'm going to put money down for you to go. But, uh, but then I found out that 
only a close relative can put money down, not any, anybody. So he said, okay, who can do that? And then my cousin said, if a slander puts the money down, I can be a responsible. With his money, I can be a responsible so you can. So anyway, Svander put the money down and uh, I got a visa and came out. <clears throat> and then, you know, I was fortunate enough to be with him for, for quite a while here to translate for him. And, uh, and uh, it was a blessing, you know, to, to hear him of his experiences of love in the Pramashram and with Baba. Um, so, um, anyway, how are we doing on time? Any have anybody has any question? They want to hear anything? Any of the, the stories uh, that my yeah, we know. have a question. We have a question from uh, Colorado with Rich. Yes. This is fantastic and phenomenal. Thank you very much for it. But I have one question. It's, it's technical. What is exactly the difference in speaking? Is it Farsi and Darcy? Darcy is the Indian. Farsi so, is... Yeah, Farsi or Persian is, uh, is basically the Iranian language. Then Dari, they call Dari is a... Is Dari. Another, yeah, it's another language which is spoken between Zoroastrians in Iran. And uh, Mani knew Dari, actually. Baba knew Dari, Mani knew Dari. Uh, Baba's mother and father, they knew Dari. So sometimes I would go to India, I would talk to Mani, although I knew English, but I wanted, I love to talk to her in Dari. So we would talk in Dari. Any other question? Oh, hair. Yes. Uh, so far, Sheed, I have a few questions for you. First of all, did you ever meet Baba yourself? No, I didn't. No. no. Okay. No. So you were a lot younger, is that it? Or just never had the chance? No, well, I had the chance, but, uh, you know, I was... I Your was, parents met him, though. My pa yeah, my parents were poor, as I mentioned earlier. Ah, okay. Even, yeah, even my dad couldn't take my mother until 1969 uh -huh. that they were going to go. Right. They heard that Baba Dorf is going. Oh, okay. So they never went. Yeah, I, I, okay. And um, so uh, your uncles were in Baba's Prem Ashram, right? And I'm sure yeah. they were there for about a year and a half or so. Is that right? Eight, yeah, 18 months. Yeah, my, yeah. One of them was in Prem Ashram. One of them is stayed in Mayor Ashram. Right. Yeah, Khodaya was in Mehr Ashram and Khosro ended up in Prem Ashram. Okay. Could you expand on any of their um, uh, interactions with Baba or any significant events that they shared with you? I'm sure you know many stories of time with the, in the ashram. So anything like that to enlighten us would be great. Well, yeah, Khosro remembers that uh, they would play cricket with Baba on the upper Merabad. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the boys and, you know, uh, Baba. And, and once uh, they throw the ball and Baba hit the ball and the boys were looking up and up and they saw the ball going and going and but they never saw it coming back down. Really? So, yeah, oh. so that was a surprise <laughs> to him. And once, uh, another time, my uh, host said that, you know, Baba wanted some jokes to be to be said. And oh, then Hosro remembers a joke. He says, I'm going to tell a joke to Baba. And the joke was that he said, uh, he tells Baba that I had a dream. Oh, somebody had a dream. This is the joke. Somebody had a dream that uh, he saw a devil in his dream. And he, he was, you know, fighting with the devil and all that and k grabbing the beard of the devil and pulling and all that. And when he wakes up, he sees that he's pulling his own beard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that you remember that, that he talked to Baba and Baba was laughing. Mm -hmm. And then the, there was, uh, the, 
in creation in this causes book, uh, the doll, the cloth doll that Baba uses to yes. explain the journey of the soul through uh, stone all the way to human being. Also mm -hmm. remembers that, that, that mm -hmm. Baba brought that in his palm, you know, like that. And he said, now this is rock. And then opened it up. And then he says, now this is vegetable. And then this is warm. And, you know, kind of showed them, raise the head or lower mm -hmm. the head and kind of explain to them, uh, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. Hodayar was mostly in Mehr Ashram, and uh, he never went to Prem Ashram, but he remembers, you know, Baba would come in the morning after Hari Paramatma prayer, Hari Paramatma, Allah, God, Aurama, God, Yazran, who. So after all that, that they would sing, Baba would play with the boys. So, you know, sometimes they would play seven tiles, um, mm -hmm. Sometimes cricket, sometimes um, gilidanda, gilidanda. Yes. You know, all of this, he remembered that. Yeah. And he, he actually, he, his English was very good. He was speaking English, and he said that all that English and things that I studied was uh, in Merasham for that 18 months, and I never went to school after that. That was it. And, but he was translating Baba's, you know, discourses and sharing it with other uh, Baba lovers. Amazing. And yeah. and you have written a book, uh, Prem Ashram Boys. Is that is that your book? That... Yeah, it's called it's called the Boys. Yeah, Bob Moss. The Boys. We, yeah. we got together. And mm -hmm. that. It's mostly um, the story of uh, Chota Baba, Espandiar Vesali. Uh, Ali, and also, you know, my uncle and all that briefly, and brushes a little bit on my dad to his stories with Bob. Mm -hmm. So, amazing. And any encounters with the Mandli that you can remember or anything, any interactions with them that um, yeah. made a mm -hmm. on you? The Mandalis, you know, I always love to hear Eretz. Uh, uh, yeah. And, uh, but, but, you know, the, Alaba, being a Persian, mm -hmm. loved the Persian Baba Lord. So when, when, he, when you would go, Alaba wouldn't let you, you know, go around and all that and mm -hmm. go into the Mandali hall. He would say, come to my room. He would take you to his room. So after a couple of trips to India that Alava was doing that, once we were sitting at the table, so I told Alava, Do, don't you think I am not that kind of a Persian that I should come to your room all the time? Maybe I should go listen to Eric. Do you mind if I go listen to Eric? Then he thought a little bit and said, don't, you can go, you can go listen to Eric. <laughs> so I came and they, um, you know, went to the Monday Hall. Right. So, um, Mani, I had a lot of interaction, uh, actually, uh, very, very, very um, loving, very loving. Uh, we were talking, Daddy, once. Actually, I took some videos of Mani and Erich mm -hmm. and all that, too. Someday I should bring them out and share, because uh, you know, it might be very rare videos. Uh, yeah, but... Yeah, but... Uh, we would talk in Daddy and you know, talk about Baba. I would love to listen um, to Mani and the women Mandali. Mera, um, you know, you could not get close to her too much. Mm -hmm. Remember once I was in India with my older, my younger sister, who is older than me, but younger sister. Yeah. Actually, her name is Gohar too. And, oh. Yeah, well, yeah. Gohar was there, I was there. And I said, well, is it possible I take a, you know, uh, so you take a photo with mm -hmm. me and uh, Mera. And then she, she said, okay, I'll ask Mera. And she asked Mera, Mera, is it possible Harshit can take a photo with you? She said, that's fine, but somebody should be between me and him. Mm -hmm. So I think somebody, uh, you know, was standing between me and Mera. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I, I would go when I was there. I would go um, sit, sit, you know, on the porch close to Mero, 
and the women one the day they would talk about new life and you know the mm -hmm. stories and their uh, life did blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, in 1977, when I went for the first time, the tree that uh, Baba's image was there behind Baba's room or Mera's room actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was so vivid. I mean. Nobody had said anything, but as soon as I looked my there and I saw Baba, I said, "Oh, Baba!" And then I, you know, I came up to basically uh, knowing what the story of what the story was of you know, the tree and the image of Baba because mm -hmm. of Mera's longing, such a longing that she had. Uh, she would look out all the time and until the image comes. Uh, after Baba dropped uh, his body. And uh, her footprint is there, Mera's footprint of uh, looking, looking out all the time, thinking of Baba. Such a great love. I mean, though that is the love. That is the pure, pure love. I mean, we should take the purity of love um, that St. Francis had for Jesus, Mera had for Baba, um, Hafez had for his master and all that. If we t uh, take those purity of those love uh, as an example in our life, then we can compare where we are and where we need to be or where we should be. I mean, we can't say we are a Baba lover until the, really the divine love shines through us. That Then it's a real Baba lover. Then one can say, I'm a Baba lover. Um, we can say we are Baba likers, but not Baba lovers. Mm -hmm. I think that <laughs> somebody brought that up earlier. So, uh, so um, Farshid, there's a question in the chat. Uh, yes. Prakash is asking about creating love. Did Prem Ashram boys talk to you about it? They were meditating, repeating his name, etc. I believe to create love. Anything you heard on this from Premashram boys? I did, and the last thing that his family told me, and my uncles also would practice, was there are different degrees. But his family was the extreme end. He would say, love Baba within your del and with your del. It means within your heart, the del, you know, we have it in, I guess, Urdu and Persian, but English, you know, they call it heart. Heart of the del is the seat of the soul, where the soul is. So if you can love Baba in, in your del and with your del, that is the best meditation or best inner communion with, uh, with the beloved. Uh, now, Hafez, uh, who Baba loved also, is one of the, his favorite poets. He was a perfect master. Uh, he, he says, Del ke ayine shahis gobari dara. As khuda mi talabam sohbet roshan rai. He says, Del, which is the mirror of the king, means that you can see anything through it. Once the Del is, is, is clear, it's like a mirror shining, you can see anything. Mm -hmm. He says, that Del, which is within everyone, within every atma, any iota, from electron all the way to human being, that is there, but it has a dust on it. He says a human being, which is developed now to infinite consciousness and can see God because he has to have a human body, otherwise the soul cannot see God. Until you know, but their veil is covered with dust. This is what Hafez says. He says, "But I want a help of a of a perfect master to remove the dust for me, and that dust needs to be somehow cleared out by hook or crook, as as Erich said, by hook or crook. Now, how one can love." We can bring it to a simple uh, way of doing it for the beginners. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sander uh, and other boys 
in the ashram told me from, you know, how one can start as a beginner and how can one finish as a doc professional, doctoral degree, basically. The beginner, you know, one cannot image Baba, maybe. You know, you look at Baba's picture, if you can close your eyes and keep that picture within your third eye for a while, you are doing good, you are doing right. But even for this, for some, the reason I say that, we asked that question for many in the crowd, and we said, okay, look at a picture of Baba that you like for a while and close your eyes. What do you see? Some said, oh, I don't see anything. It's all black. Uh, some said, you know, I can hold the, hold that image maybe for a, a second or so, and then my, my, my thoughts come in and, not, you know, I can't do anything. So for a beginner, the best is to repeat the avatar's name. Just repeat his name. And as you repeat his name, if, if the capacity is within you, this is all the, depends on the capacity. The reason depends on the capacity is the, is, the, is the reason that how much accumulated sanskaras one has and how much, how long of a journey the person has come in. If, if the soul is close to the divinity, it's easy. If it's no far away, it's very difficult. But by repeating his name, anybody can repeat his name. Even a criminal person can repeat Meher Baba's name. Meher Baba, Meher Baba, or Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba. Close your eyes, repeat his name. While you are closing your eyes, try to image him. First, you image him within the third eye. And as you get better at it, and you, you keep that practice going, and then you you see your intuition goes up because the the dust is getting removed as you remove as you call his name and love him the dust of the path which is the accumulated samskaras is slowly removed and then your intuition increases because your intuition increases and the dust is getting removed slowly you can feel the love the divine love. Now, this is not a still the divine, divine love, but it's love. It's some degree of love. Until one has the image constantly within person. And if you can image him constantly, as soon as, even with your open eyes or your closed eyes, you can see his image, and you are with him all the time, then the dust will appear eventually wipe out and the glory of that shine of the uh, divine will come through and uh, then nothing then it burns then, then then it burns the lover and burns everything and you're, you're gone basically it's not you anymore it's it's only him what is left is him so that was you know that is what we have to do, and that is a challenge that all of us have from, you know, one degree to the other. I mean, for some who have met Mayor Baba, it was easy because he, his presence, his presence was so divine that being in the presence of the avatar um, it's just amazing. I mean, it, it, it just wipes everything. It, it, and uh, for them, for those lucky ones, uh, there was no need for meditation. There was no need for uh, creating love because the love was already created. Uh, for them, it was a constant thinking of, uh, of the beloved. And the reason I'm saying that I, you know, um, I was sitting in in uh, in their Ruba here in Myrtle Beach once. Um, Darwin Shaw was sitting on my on my right side, and Esfandiar was sitting on my left side. We were not, we were on a couch, and people were also in front of us. 
And uh, I was translating, you know, for Svandiyar, what Darwin would say, and then what Svandiyar would say, I would translate to English to Darwin. Between all this conversation, it was the atmosphere was so surcharged with Baba's love that I couldn't hold myself. Uh, I mean, the, the divinity of that love was so great that I couldn't hold myself. I burst into tears. I was mm -hmm. weeping like crazy. And Darwin looked at me and said, what is going on? What's, what's wrong with you? And I really had felt that I am missing Baba's physical presence. So I told Baba, Darwin, Darwin, I am missing Baba's physical presence. And Darwin said, I do too. I do too. And that's what all he said. And then we all went into a quiet mode, you know. We, um, there was nothing to talk about because it was so, the love was so much that there was nothing to talk about. We all, everybody, even in the crowd, everybody kept silence. We were silent like about, I would say, at least 15 minutes, I could say. Mm -hmm. We were all silent. And at the end of the silence, uh, there was a lady who was caring, taking care of Darwin at the time. Her name was Summer. Summer, yeah. Uh, Summer got up and said, Darwin, we forgot your pill uh, because I think Darwin was taking some medication. And we need to go back because you have, we, I didn't bring your medication. And Darwin was very humble and obedient. He says, okay, we, we'll go. So he got up. Uh, and then Svandir got up, I helped Svandir because he had broken his hip, he was on cane. So I helped him and you know, kind of brought him close to the door and Darwin said goodbye. And as Darwin is leaving and sitting in the car, Svandir turns his, his head towards me, which I was you know, uh, standing behind him. He said, did you feel that presence? He's asking me that now. And I said, yes. He said, that is God's presence. That is Baba's presence. Mm -hmm. Practically, practically, they went on, showed me what Baba's presence was. And that presence, if anybody is, is in that presence, is so blissful, so sublime that you don't want to come out of it. You don't want it even look look at the world anymore i mean you want to be there you want to be in that present so um so that is where you know where we need to be that law that is the divine law that mm -hmm. we need to be and, uh, thank you thank you baba mm -hmm. yeah of course. so we have a question from florida with anthony yes anthony j baba uh, Jay Baba Farshi, thank you so much. This is amazing. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, I know in, in the past when I'd seen videos with the Spondiar in it, I mean, you could almost just see the look on his face. It's just like, oh my God, like it, it just the peace. And um, did he stay on the third plane or after he left the Prem Ashram, did Baba bring him back down into like a, more of like a gross consciousness? Like did Asfandiyar ever talk to you about like what his inner experience was like on the day to day? Like yes. his experience of Baba? Yeah, he did. You know, when, when Baba sent him back, he said, I had my experiences uh, for a long time. And then, uh, as a youngster, actually, his, his house is a still a yaz. We can go visit that house. And he had built a small room for himself. And he would meditate, like in the Pranashram, on Baba, and be there. And sometimes his father also was a farmer. So the father would ask him to, to help. He would go and help. But all he said, I kept my experiences until I got married. He said, when I got married, it, you know, it, it, it was like a, like a darkness coming on me. 
Then I asked him, why Amu? Why, why did it happen? I mean, what, what does that do with the marriage? And he said, the problem is, it's like a, like, you know, Baba being like this, uh, he said like sunshine, you know, it's shining. Now you are uh, holding an umbrella above your head, which is, you know, the marriage transcara, basically. Then you're clouding the shine of the divinity. So that's why he said it, it stopped. But then one, one point he made to me, because he knew why I was married and all that. He said, the point here is, Baba had showed me the art of loving. And I, I started again using that art, because it's an art. Hafez also says, you know, uh, uh, loving is an art. And he said, I started using that, and then again, I felt I have everything back. And his experiences was that, you know, he would smell a great fragrance um, of, uh, that you cannot even compare to any flowers in the world. Um, then again, uh, he would see light and sometimes the stars even coming from him, light coming from him. And, and also he would say, uh, you know, like Hafez says, um, there is also a ring of a bell. He says, when a person is on the path, there is always a ring of a bell coming in their uh, ear, inner ear, not the outer ear. And then after, when he broke his hip, he said, I experienced the fourth plane of consciousness momentarily. And I can tell you the story of what, what happened that he said, if you're interested. And then when he was here at the end or close to the end of his life, because the end of his life, he went back to Iran and dropped his body there. He was on the sixth plane of consciousness. So, uh, and, you know, even if he had a state on sixth plane of consciousness, Baba says, a sixth planer, when drops his body, is united with Baba, is united with God. Uh, the story of his fourth plane is, is interesting. He said that, I, you know, I had broken my hip. I was sitting there in meditation. And then my wife also had broken her hip. And she was in agony of going to the bathroom. I, I couldn't get up and help him, her. But my son was in the other room snoring. So I was calling my son to get up and help the mother. But the son didn't wake up. And I said, gosh, what am I going to do? I said, I'm going to start you know, concentrating on Baba and getting Baba's help. He said, as I was thinking and loving Baba, he said, the love became so much that I felt infinite power within me. Through that love, he said, I, I experienced infinite power. And then he said, there was a book on the shelf in the room. He said, I'm going to try and see if I can, with this power, I can lift the book off the shelf. And he said, I started, you know, pushing myself to see if I can lift the book off the shelf. He said, I couldn't. But then I said, well, you know, the thought came, what am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Let's see if I can use this power that I feel within myself to love even Baba more. He said, at that time, I started loving. And I love so much that I, I felt like I'm... In, 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 Swimming in an infinite ocean of love. And with that, what he said, you know, infinite ocean of love, divine love comes on the fifth plane of consciousness. And Baba momentarily gave him the experience of fourth plane of consciousness, but he didn't let him use that because, you know, Baba said, if you abuse it, you're going to go all the way down to the rock. But because he had Baba, Baba protected him, and he used his, uh, his power to love Baba more, and Baba pushed him to the fifth plane of consciousness. And then later years, uh, I mean, I, I would feel that he was really, really up there, because sitting and not even talking, I mean, those who maybe in the audience who, were, who met him, they, they know what I'm talking about. 
because sitting even there, I'm not even talking, and he was sitting there, you could feel the, the love was emanating from him, emanating from him. I mean, you could not, um, how would I say, do or think or even say something out of, uh, in, out of uh, uh, impoliteness. I mean, for, for the respect of that love, one, one would keep quiet. Um, one, I remember once we had traveled to, to Canada to be with my sister because my Gohar, my sister, was living in Canada for a while. And he had gone there and stayed there. And my sister called me. I was in Seattle at the time. He said, why don't you come up and, uh, you know, uh, stay here for a little bit and, uh, you know, be with us. I said, sure, I'm coming. And I went there. I got there and, you know, we greeted each other and all that. And I, I, I'm sitting there. Svander is sitting there. And his, his routine was think of Baba and forget about everything else. Love Baba, think of Baba. And I, I was sitting there also in that bliss that he had. I was enjoying that bliss and trying to basically uh, tune myself to that bliss. And then my sister after a while said, you drove all the way here and now you're not even talking. I mean, why don't you say something? I said, there, there, I mean, it's no need. Huh? There is no need for talking. So. But I tell you, it was, it was an experience of a lifetime. I mean, I, I, to, to me, the amazement is uh, that how could the Mandali, how could really the Mandali be in Baba's presence and not to drop their body? That was a miracle by itself. I mean, me being with Asfandiyar gave me uh, an example of how one could be with Baba and not even, you know, dropping their body. And I think it was Baba's blessing that the Mandalis did not experience that love. I mean, I remember Erich would say, Erich would say, Baba would ask me, do you love me? And I would say, Baba, I don't know. And Baba would say, come, come and give me a kiss. You know, say that you love me. So he would go and kiss Baba and say, Baba, I love me. I mean, Baba would keep them so they won't experience that love to do his universal work, to be with him, to do the universal work. Otherwise, there was no way that they could not roll on that dust, roll at his feet. I mean, it's, it's just impossible. The, the, the presence of of, of divine, of the avatar is so overwhelming that if he, he said, I am like a light, but I cover myself so the shine doesn't go out. And if the shine is shining, oh my God, it's going to be uh, heads and feet broken, basically. I mean, people roll, roll on that dust. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, thank you. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Ooh. Let's go to Washington to Judy. Oh, Judy is here, huh? Judy Robertson? Yeah, Jay Baba. For oh, she... How are you? How are you? Wonderful to see you and, and all your rich sharing tonight. And to you, too. you yes. shared so much with all of us, and I thought. I would offer, um, well, it's not just a tidbit. I'd offer something to you and everyone else um, in relationship precisely to what you've been saying about Isfandiar and the presence, the divine presence of Mayor Baba. And I, um, I had the great, great good fortune this life to live for uh, many years at Maribad. And all those years, um, I had samadhi duty every afternoon. And, but there, 
is one particular period that is very alive in my heart. And that is, um, I think it was in the fall of 2002 or 2003, um, you actually may know the, the date uh, for she. Um, that is too proud, yeah. That um, Isfandiar was there with your sister Gohair uh, as his attendant. And they would come up to my, my um, um, samadhi duty was from three to five every afternoon. And Isfandiar and Gohair would, would uh, come up the hill at four o'clock every day for an hour. And basically all the other pilgrims, Easterners or Westerners were down having tea for that hour. So hardly ever um, did other people, occasionally a, a child from the village would come up and I would offer prasad. But most of the time it was just the three of us. And because I was on Samadhi duty, that person looks into the Samadhi um, as part of the job. So I was in the center and Isfandiar um, was, I believe on my left and go hair on my right, but we were all squished together um, so that we, the three of us could see into the Samadhi simultaneously. We sat in utter beautiful silence, basking in Baba's loving presence And those precious hours, I think they were there for two months during that period. Um, they are, one can't really begin to describe them, but it was truly the presence of God. Mm -hmm. There was a, a calmness, a, a knowingness without knowing that Baba himself was present with us at his own samadhi. Um, it, it, it's like, thank you, Baba. It, uh, it, mm -hmm. and, and I know that that's, you know, what Isfandiar, when he would say to, to love Baba from your dell, from, and as I translate, bottom of your heart. Um, it's, he's here with us. He's here with every single one of us this very moment. In this gathering, in anything else we do, the, it's not a trick, but it's like the trick is <laughs> to tune into it, to right. our own hearts for him, to him, to let him flow where he already is residing in our own heart. Um, and, and I'm personally convinced that you don't have to be on the fifth plane or any other plane. Um, just if one opens one's heart, to the love of God, that which is already within us becomes evident and real and alive. So. Yes, Jai Baba. Yeah, Hafiz, Hafiz has a couplet. He says, Dastas talab nadaram ta jan man barayat. Ya jan rasad be janam, ya jan zetan barayat. بکشای تربتم را بعد از وفات و بنگرد که از آتش درونم دود از کفن برایم. He says, I'm not gonna give up on trying. Hafiz says, I'm not, give, I'm not gonna give up on, on trying on, uh, until I get to the beloved. 
either my soul comes out of my body or I become one with the beloved. And then he says, open my cast when I die, open my grave and look into the cast and look into the, through the coffin that see that the smoke is coming out of my coffin. This, <laughs> you know, that much love. So this is the love we are asking. And we should, we should be, uh, we should be uh, striving for, you know, that's the love. But yeah, thank you, Judy, for sharing that. That was wonderful. I mean, you know, really, uh, Baba's presence is powerful. And it's like a mirror that if the, our mirror, you know, is clean, then, uh, you know, his love can be reflected. As simple as that. Uh, so, uh, and Baba made, he came, his, 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 uh, his universal work was to clean this mirror of us, basically. He said, I've come to sow the seed of love in your hearts. And in spite of all superficial diversities that, you know, your life in creation can, or whatever comes, uh, I don't remember the exact quote, but anyway, uh, eventually, basically, will will come through. That love is going to flourish and will come through, uh, and we shouldn't give up. But there is a work, you know, as as uh, Fandor said, the work needs to be done. And uh, lucky those who met Nair Baba in in his physical presence. Uh, you know, most of the work was done by Baba himself. He cleaned it up, but now uh, that his physical presence is not there, the divinity of God never diminishes. He's within our heart, as he said. Uh, our work is to clean that mirror that he can shine through. Say Baba. Baba. Can I go go to Tony? Yes, Tony. Tony, you're muted. Is that better? Yes, that's good. Okay, sorry. Yes, Yes, Farshid, I think, I believe we met, I think it was you, uh, when Esfandiyar was at the Northeast Gathering. Yes. And, uh, it was, I, I I was there with him for a very, it was a relatively brief time, but I remember him vividly speaking about the Dill and what a deep impression it made. And I could feel within myself as he was speaking what the Dill was. And and even get a flavor, unique flavor of his particular relationship with Baba. Oh, wonderful moment. I mean, it is fresh now that I mention it now, as it was <laughs> decades ago. And thank you so much for sharing these stories. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Let's go to Santa Barbara, California, Marta. Hello, Farshid. You know, uh, Jeff's in India right now, and he told me to ask you, did I miss it? Did you already explain what the Dell is? The Dell, I guess we kind of um, mentioned that, um, you know, Judy said the bottom of the heart, which is right, but really um, doesn't have a physical location where you feel love, that's where the Dell is. Uh -huh. um, if, you want to, if you want to assign a physical location to it, then you feel love. And the love that a stranger sometimes would explain, or, you know, he would say, how, how could we love Baba? Or how could we uh, know if you are loving through the Dell? A stranger said, well, think of it this way. You haven't seen your lost son, maybe, or your lost daughter, or your lost husband or wife for a long time. And suddenly the door opens and she or he shows up. I mean, how excited you become and how, uh, where you love, feel that love. That is where 
your daily is basically, and you know, he would give that example. But that's where the divine uh, jewel is sitting. Um, because Baba said, you know, everybody has, every Atma, every soul has that jewel within them, in that there. And that jewel, it, it doesn't shine because of the cloud of the sanskaras. And once the cloud of the sanskaras are wiped out or cleaned, now there are many ways of cleaning these sanskaras. One is the perfect master cleans it up for you, which as, he, as Baba did for the Mandalis and many, many who met him, uh, even some of the Pramashram boys, he cleaned that dust. Chota Baba like became on the sixth plane of consciousness and whatnot. And some, by working as a Samuel said, you know, one has to work to clean that dust by themselves. And by repeating his name, imaging him within you, and creating that love that Baba wanted from, from the boys in Paramashram to do, to create that love, that divine, divine love, pure, purity of love, then the Dell, the cloud of the Dell will go away. And, and you know, the, 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 the divinity will shine. Okay, so there's another problem. It says, Chehre yar nedarad nigab o hijab. Gobar rah benishan ta nazar tamani kem. He says the image of the beloved doesn't have a veil or or, or or a cover. You have to settle the dust of your path until you can see his image, means the divine image. And what the, settle, the, the dust, the settling of this dust is the sun's curves. It's like a cloud of dust, which is covered that uh, uh, the dell. And when the cloud goes, um, the divine will shine through. The love will shine through. So is this, is this something that we can physically work on in life, or is it Baba's grace that assists us by us just remembering his name? How does that how does that work? Uh, all I can say is what uh, what the boys, what the Pramashram boys told me, especially as Samuel. Sometimes I would say, you know, a lot of Baba lovers say that Baba is taking them on, you know, uh, undercover on, or, or veil, basically, yeah. mm -hmm. taking them through the path. And as Slander said, they are, uh, they are hallucinating. He, <laughs> said, he said that everybody has to go through the path and they have to experience this. And, uh, uh, you know, but, but, but they have to work for it. This is what Esfandor told me. And I, I know that my uncle was in the same mood. And, and he would say, you know, uh, the, the perfect master doesn't give something for nothing. And Baba says that also in many of his words. He says, uh, you know, they are, um, the perfect masters are so stingy. They don't give you something for uh, uh, so simple, you know, easy. You have to work for it. You have to create that love. You have, you know, that love should come so much that uh, he gives you the divine love. The divine love is a gift from the master to the disciple, but the disciple has to first show that he deserves that love. And deserving that love means creating that love. You have to love. By love, you get love. So the more you love, the more he gives you. And Farshid, I, I wanted to clarify something. When I use the term bottom of, the, of one's heart, um, that I felt was the translation of, um, it, it's a colloquial phrase in English. I didn't mean it as a, um, a physical location in the body, but the bottom of the, the phrase, what, the bottom of one's heart means to love with your whole being, with everything um, in you. 
So yeah. I was meaning it in that vein rather than a, a physical location. Although I all I remember many times um, Isfandiar would point to the lower part of his belly um, or, you know, torso as, you know, when he would say the word Dell. Um, so it's sort of that, and that's what made me start thinking bottom of the heart. Um, but I was meaning it as loving, loving the Lord with everything you've got. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, that reminds me of another couplet of Hafez. You know, he says, Bahar su tiri ramane kardam ta magar yeki kargar shara. Hafez was in a, a dilemma of trying all kinds of things and not getting anywhere. And he said that from, from every, uh, every direction, I have thrown an arrow that hopefully one arrow will hit the target. And what he meant was, as you said, with all your being, however you can, you should love him. Repeating his name, remembering constantly, imaging him within you, and doing, you know, Baba says, help others, make others happy, even at the cost of your ha or own happiness. Obeying his orders, one of the, his wish, these are helpful. Everything is helpful. I mean, Baba doesn't want us to go in a corner on the top of the mountain and think of him there because that, the, sankara, the sanskaras are not going to wipe out. If you are in the world, the sanskaras are slowly guide you towards where needs to be cleaned while remembering him. So if you have killed someone, someone will kill you and that sanskara is going to be finished. Next life you come, you start from where you left off and you go on, but you have to remember him and live in the world. So no matter what happens in the world, that maybe is you know, not to your benefit, as you think, or benefit, benefit of the mind, I should say, you shouldn't be worried because it's to your benefit of the soul. And that is what we need to do. We need to think of him, love him, and let, it, let anything that happens, happen. It doesn't matter. Um, so that was ha what Hafez also was saying, that you know I do the best I can. I throw uh, every arrow here and there. Means that I do my prayers, I do my repentance. I uh, wake up in the middle of the night and think of him and try to love him all the best I can do with all different arrows. Hopefully, one of these will hit the target. That's what also Hope says, which, which is in regards to that. So, so, so we've, yeah. reached, we've reached the uh, the witching hour. Uh -huh. So, oh, is there any last thing you'd like to say? Thank you so much, Farshi. Uh, yeah. Diane, I think there's one more question somebody's asking in the chat. Would you like to read it? Uh, okay. I haven't been checking that. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. That's okay. Um, hold on. I need reading glasses for this one. And this will be the last one. Farshid, mm -hmm. did you often experience Baba's presence when translating for Isfandiar, or was it rare? Great question, Christina. <laughs> great, great question. And for me, when he would say, you know, come to Myrtle Beach or come to California, to translate for me, it was a blessing. I mean, um, I would go and every time, every time I should say uh, that I was there and translating for him, I would uh, be chuckling, chuckling, chuckling with love, chuckling with, uh, with the bliss uh, that he would emanate from himself. And also the talk of Baba uh, was so overwhelming uh, that uh, yeah it would you know break break me into pieces I would uh, just cry sometimes would run out from a meeting run out basically to cool off it was it was so much I couldn't hold myself 
That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> and I, I personally found the same thing. I had the opportunity to be with Asmandiar many times over many years. And consistently, he carried, as I found Darwin Shaw also carried, the presence of God with them as they walked, you know, and talked and did mundane things or speaking of, of Baba. Um, Everyone down. It was, it was, they always, both of them always radiated Baba in my experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. they had nothing else except Baba. I mean, all their life was concentrated on Baba and think of him and talking of talking about him and telling of Baba to others. Yeah. Well, I think everybody's done with the questions. So I will thank you once again, Farshid, thank for you. joining us. You have so many wonderful stories. And I think we should have you again at some point. Just you have so much more to share, I feel. So maybe we'll have you again uh, at some point if you yeah, are with us. But yes. anyway, thank you so much. Thank we have all sure. yeah. enjoyed our story. Thank you. Jay. <laughs> Jay. Jay. Okay. Good night. Well, folks, good night. And I'll hopefully um, see you yeah, next um, week. Thank you, Pushy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Farshid. That was great. Thank Go ahead. Thank you so much. Indeed. And thanks to Diane. Thank you. How's Terry doing, Diane? She's kicking up a storm. I see her. <laughs> Lots of love. Lots of love. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all. This <laughs> we call my knee now, Anita. <laughs> the name of our new knee replacement is, is Anita. Oh. <laughs> so we have a new member. J Baba. J Baba. J Baba, everyone. J Baba. Mm -hmm.